Well, it's the kind of evening that I don't like giving these types of forecasts for sure. The Storm Prediction Center really increasing the coverage of severe weather, and I think if you're anywhere inside this area, you need to be weather aware, especially overnight into tomorrow. And there are a few spots in particular that I'm concerned about. And if you live in these areas, especially here and another area right here along the, the Ohio River, um, where they've highlighted this area in orange. So southern Indiana, southern Illinois, up into southwestern Ohio, even northern Kentucky, right along the Ohio River. That's going to be a spot to watch. And just because you're not here, let me look. We've got a slight risk here in yellow for other areas. And something that is concerning tonight, the tornado risk, especially at night. And uh, with the tornado watch already going up back here across parts of Illinois, that tornado threat shifting a little bit further south here, at least increasing for parts of, again, the same areas I just outlined right along the Ohio River. And, you know, we we've been talking about southern Michigan for the last couple of days. I still think this area here, I mean, it's still highlighted. It's just not as much of a risk. I mean, the risk didn't really change here. We've just got a higher risk now that's evolving here along the Ohio River and into parts of central Ohio late tonight. So, Weather radio, if you don't have that, make sure you have your phone or at least a way to get warnings if they come out. Weather.gov, that is where you want to get your latest warnings and information. Your local television, your local radio broadcast, the EAS has to come out across the airwaves. So make sure you have a way to tune in to get those live updates when those warnings come out for your area. One of the best things that happened years ago, you started getting those on your phones. Make sure you have that allowed on your phone to get those alerts because tonight would be the night in these areas that I would want to get that alert if I were here. Another concern will be hail and I'll tell you one thing right in this area you could see hail as big as two inches. In fact the Storm Prediction Center had uh, something come out that said maximum size could be two up to three inches three and a half inches I mean, we're talking about some big hail. Anytime you get strong updrafts that could potentially cause tornadoes, you're going to get hail. And that is a concern through the overnight as well, and it could be damaging. And, you know, even if you don't see a tornado, you're going to still likely see strong gusty winds with any big storms that fire up. Strong damaging winds possible anywhere in these areas with, again, a hashed area of significant severe right here in that same area that was highlighted for the tornadoes. So this severe outlook actually goes through 12Z Wednesday, which would be 7 a.m. Eastern. And I think that's where we'll likely see these storms by this point and then as we head into tomorrow that risk shifts a little bit further to the south and east and the thing is it will likely start to weaken here you're going to get a little bit cooler in the mountains but still thunderstorms possible all the way up into new york not nearly as strong or severe nothing like what we're talking about tonight something that i usually go to when we're looking at tornadoes is the significant tornado parameter index and this is a great way to get an idea of shear in the atmosphere, it takes into account instability and a couple of other parameters that are really needed to see a tornado. And you know, back when I was in college, the one thing that I learned was that anything over a one is something that you have to pay attention to. So here we go through the afternoon into the evening hours and look at this, we're talking about five, six, seven, eight, right here, especially along Southern Indiana. And look, just because you're not in the hot pink, you've still got a decent, significant tornado parameter at what, four or 5 a.m. tomorrow here across central Kentucky. Now look how much it weakens as it moves off to the east. So again, it does start to back down a little bit, but the Storm Prediction Center is still highlighting a small area for the chance of some rotating storms that could produce a tornado. So You'll want to stay weather aware in these areas even early tomorrow morning as everything pushes off to the east. So let's take a look at our simulated radar here on the HRRR. This is being recorded as of Tuesday evening. And, you know, the thing that I, I notice is, are these lone cells out here by themselves. You don't like to see that, especially in an environment that I just showed you where the significant tornado parameter is high. You've got a lot of wind shear. Uh, so you could get some rotating storms really quick. So supercells possible in these areas with some tornadoes and a few of them could be on the strong side here we are at 11 o'clock i think an area to watch too and i've mentioned it right here into parts of michigan as this moves north uh, into some cooler air you'll have winds coming in at different directions so some of these storms could rotate they'll have to be watched and then you've got these storms really moving through a 1 2 a.m tonight they start to take on more of a linear shape i guess you could say they start to really line up so this would be 2 a.m. Central, 3 a.m. Eastern. It doesn't mean you wouldn't see anything trying to hook here or get some rotation going on. It's just that the storms start to line up. Do they start to bow out a little more? That would cause more wind damage and severe thunderstorm type winds. But either way, you've still got that rotation. It's going to be an environment where you have a lot of wind shear with height. It might be a little more stable, but still that wind shear is there. 
And then as we head through the mor- tomorrow morning, this is 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're starting to see the showers and storms pushing into parts of West Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, looking much weaker, though, than what clearly we're seeing tonight. So here comes your front. As we wake up Wednesday morning, we will feel much different behind this front. Winds will turn out of the northwest. It will still be windy. We go from 70s to 20s and teens here across parts of the Midwest. That cold pushes all the way to the east, so by the time we get into Thursday morning, we're below freezing in New York City, single digits across parts of northern New England. We're even into the low 20s here in the mid-Atlantic. We do start to warm up some off to the southwest as we see a bit of a southwesterly flow start to develop, but that cold air will hold tight here in the parts of New England a little bit longer. Eventually, it will move out and we'll start to warm up some. I talked about some of the snow across the west. Man, I'll tell you what, a time to be in Tahoe. I don't know if that's a good thing, to be honest with you, because if you're hoping to ski out there, this may be significant enough that it shuts things down. I mean, you can't run the lifts without power. You can't do certain things. I mean, when you talk about four to eight feet of snow, and that's the forecast from the National Weather Service, and maybe more in the higher elevations, places like Truckee, I think, are two to four feet. Then you get up into the higher elevations, four to eight feet, and some of the models I'm looking at are putting down more than that. So it's going to be pretty tough here with blizzard warnings all across the West Coast. Again, weather.gov, get your warnings there to see what's going on where you are. That snow starts to move inland as we move toward the beginning of next week, and things do get a little bit quieter across the West. Here comes our next system for the East with more rain moving toward the Mid-Atlantic. And look, another storm for the uh, Tahoe and the Sierra Nevada. My goodness gracious. I, I can't even imagine how much snow we're going to have if this keeps up over the next couple of weeks before winter finally lets go across the West. All right, that's all I got for now. Stay weather aware tonight. I'll catch you guys next time.